everybody welcome back to another video in our type 2 diabetes program if you missed the first video my name is mark i'm an advanced diabetes specialist dietitian and i'm going to be taking you through the program in this video we are looking at how we measure your glucose levels over a prolonged period these two measurements are essentially how we decide whether or not someone needs more treatment less treatment or they're doing okay so this is really crucial to understanding your diabetes and how well it's being managed now, as the board's given away, we have two measurements. We have the HbA1c test, and we have something called time in target. Now, we're going to touch on both of these, but we'll start with the HbA1c because this is the more conventional test that is used. So the HbA1c test is a blood test. And the best way to think about this is it is a three-month average of your glucose levels. So it gives us an insight into what's happened over the last three months. And what we want to do is look at the trend of these over many months and many years, because then we can get an idea about how well your glucose levels have been controlled um, over a period of time on average. And this will help us make decisions about whether or not we feel like your glucose levels are generally running in target or above target. And in some patients who are taking certain medications, namely insulin, might be having too low blood sugars caused by the insulin, and we might need to de-escalate treatment, take some away. So it's a three month average, and we can measure this in two different measurements depending on where you live. The first is in millimoles per mole, and ideally what we want for people when they have the HbA1c test taken, it is between 48 and 59, which loosely translates to a glucose level in single figures, but it's slightly above what you'd find in someone without diabetes. If you're in the old money, which is the percentage measurement, it will be between 6.5 and 7.5%. So these are one and the same, they're just um, demonstrated slightly differently. This is the one we use in the UK, the millimoles per mole, 48 to 59. Now, as you get higher and further away from these figures, this is when the risk of complications to start to increase. So I'll pull up a graph on the screen. And as you can see, as the glucose levels get higher, the risk of complications to the eyes, the kidneys, um, cardiovascular system, amongst many others, really starts to increase, which is why your diabetes team might be really keen to get on top of high glucose levels. And it is literally, the higher they go, the more likely these risks are to occur. This isn't a scaremonger, it is to literally demonstrate why we have diabetes, uh, why the targets are what they are, and as you can see, as we start to get above that HbA1c of 59 or 7.5, the risk starts to really increase. Whereas when you're running between that 48 and 59 millimoles per mole sort of um, target range, actually the increase in risk compared to the general population isn't really increased at all, which is why it's a good place to live with your glucose levels. Now, can you get below this? Yes, you can. One, I've already touched upon with medications, but they might be pushing your glucose levels too low. And another way is to push yourself into diabetes remission. We're going to do another video on that in a later video um, for the course. So bear with us on that. We'll touch upon that later. But yes, absolutely, you can get below these values. In fact, there is another value, if we just come back to me, that if you're running between 42 and 47 millimoles per mole, that is what we consider pre-diabetes. So anything below 42, technically, you're no longer in the diabetes re uh, reference ranges. Now, if you do that without taking any medications, then that's when you're in, technically in diabetes remission. Um, for someone without diabetes, who's never got near diabetes or pre-diabetes, it's quite common to see HbA1c values in the high 20s or in the 30s, just to give you kind of reference numbers. So hopefully that makes sense with the HbA1c test. You usually get this maybe once a year, some people will get it a bit more frequently via the GP. Now we have this other one called time and target. Now this has come about as we've gained access to more technology such as flash glucose sensors like the Freestyle Libre or um, continuous glucose monitors like the Dexcom. And these have been really valuable because we can then see how the glucose levels have been performing, again, over reference ranges, somewhere between two weeks and 90 days, depending on how you set it. And you can actually see the graphs and the trends day to day or on average. So we can see highlight times of the day that you might be running a bit high. And we can do things about that. And we can do things about times that you might be running a bit low, depending on if you're taking medications that might be causing that. 
Now where time in target is more valuable than HbA1c is remember HbA1c is an average. So two people could have the same HbA1c despite having different glucose levels day to day. So someone could be between two and 20, just bouncing up and down with their glucose levels all day, but still appear to have a normal HbA1c. Whereas another patient could have the same HbA1c, but have perfect glucose levels running between five and nine. So you can really see how the average can be skewed. Time and target, on the other hand, cannot be skewed like this. We can literally see how often your glucose levels have been between the, set, the target range that you've set. For these sensors, it's usually between four and 10, which is a good place to live. So if you are in target range, 70 or more percent of the time, you're doing pretty well. Some patients I see up in the 90s, but in order to do that, they're having to test an awful lot of times, which is nothing wrong with that, but it can become a bit all-consuming from what I've heard from some patients. Others tend to be a bit more laissez-faire, but, and achieve around this 70% value. Some people are much below it, and that's for those patients that might have a bit more work to do. But these are becoming more and more commonplace, and they're becoming very powerful for both patients and healthcare pr practitioners like myself to actually get into the data and see what's going on day to day. And then we're able to target strategies to help people do that. And it's exactly the sort of thing that I do in my private practice to help people really get control of their glucose levels. But for a lot of people, this hasn't um, entered their stratosphere yet. So they're still with the HbA1c, which is still a valuable test, but it's not quite as um, targeted and maybe as valuable as the time in target, but still a good overall measurement um, if someone has a very high HbA1c, chances are that's going to be accurate. So it still gives us a pretty good idea of how well that person is being controlled. Where it does fall down, like I say, is when we're looking at averages and um, they're taking multiple medications that could skew it. So anyway, that's enough for today, I think, on the different ways we measure your glucose levels. Obviously, you also have the finger prick testing day to day, but that only gives you a moment in time. These give you a much longer time period to make decisions over. So like I say, we're looking at the trends and we want data about overall control, not necessarily day-to-day, -day, although that, those day-to-day -day tests do feed into this. So anyway, we'll leave it there and I will see you in the next video. Hi guys, Mark here. Thanks for watching the video. I hope you found it useful. Obviously, with the videos online and on YouTube, we're talking about general principles that hopefully you can take and help integrate into managing your diabetes. However, if you want personalized strategies with premium content looking at recipes, management strategies, help with an accredited dietitian who can help look at your individual data, then I suggest heading over to diabetesdietguide.com where you can send off an inquiry about how we can help you with our personalized programs, coaching programs, or one-to-one -one appointments. Thanks a lot.